What's up guys? I am back with a short video and what prompted this video to begin with was a comment I got about a week ago on a video I did back in June, I believe it was. I changed the compressor, dryer, and expansion valve out on a uh, on a Nissan car. Can't remember what year. I want to say it was a 2011. But anyway, he noticed my gauges that I was using in that video and it was really confusing him as to why those gauges look like they did the, the numbers he really was having a hard time with it and we commented back and forth i don't know three or four times and i answered his questions as they popped up but it got me thinking that there could be a lot of people getting confused by those particular gauges but might not know how to read gauges in general figured it might make for a good video so that's what i'm doing today we're going to cover everything you ever wanted to know about air conditioner gauges ac gauges are used to diagnose air conditioner systems just that simple it can tell you so much you can't tell what's going on with an ac system without them and i've seen videos where people don't even bother tying into the high side only the low side you need both sides that's the only way to accurately tell what's going on if you got a restriction in your system you're going to know by these pressures you're going to be running above average head pressure sometimes extreme and your low sides don't pull down sometimes in a vacuum if you have a restriction if you have a dirty evaporator core like if i'm on a house unit it can tell you that if you have a bad compressor that's not pumping well it can tell you that it tells you everything this is the heart of diagnosing an air conditioner but first let's just go over the gauges themselves and they're pretty much all the same the blue always indicates the suction side or the low side it's also referred to red is your high side or your high pressure and here are, these are for R134A so you know and uh, pop those in here that's your low side and you can tell by the different colors of the hoses low high now this center hose this is actually your charging hose or it's also the hose that you would uh, recover in a refrigerant or pull a vacuum on such as that now i bought these gauges these are the ones that he was confused about and i'll show you here in just a minute what confused him on these but i bought these recently off of amazon and it said robin air gauges and i'll be honest with you i didn't pay much attention to the actual gauges herself because if i would have i would not have bought these and nowhere on here does it have any branding for robin air none whatsoever the only branding at all was the case that they came in there's part number r134 aluminum manifold kit robin air I have used Robin Air stuff for many, many years. Matter of fact, I have a Robin Air vacuum pump, great little pump, but I cannot believe they put their name on these gauges. I mean, they work fine. I've used them. That's the ones I used in that video. So let me take something to point with so I don't get my stubby fingers in the way. This outer ring right here, right here, that's what was confusing him, I know. And it goes from 100 to 800. What is that? That can't be pressure because the number is way too high. But it tells you right here that it's KPA. That is kilopascals. I hope you can see that. Kilopascals is this outer number. The numbers I was reading in the video was this one right below it. One it starts from zero all the way up. I get, yeah, 120. That is actual PSI. But technically, it's PSIG, gauge pressure. And that was confusing. And nowhere on here does it say Fahrenheit. You got this C. You got the degree with a C. That's Celsius. And that's the main reason I shouldn't have bought these. Because I'm here in the USA, and we go by Fahrenheit. So you're, you might be thinking, if you're not familiar with AC work or anything like that, what in the world does temperature have to do with pressure well I'm about to tell you let's say I'm at a certain pressure let's say I'm at 35 and if I remember right on that video my low side at idle was pulling down to right at 35 or 36 
Well, if you'll look and see what corresponds with that, it says five. That's, that is your uh, saturated temperature, five, but keep in mind this is Celsius. So what is five degrees Celsius? I'm from the USA. I don't have to work with Celsius normally, but this is an app that I've had on my phone for quite a while, and it's uh, a converter. You can take Celsius, like 9 degrees Celsius. Well, I'll tell you what, let's clear it and do 5. That's 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's actually what that's reading, and that's the reason I was getting ideal temperatures out of that. You know, you had to convert it through some sort of converter, but at 36, 35 PSI, I'm running roughly 41 degrees saturated temperature inside the evaporator. And that is at the very point where the warm liquid coming from the condenser goes through the, the metering device, whether it be an expansion valve or orifice tube, whatever the case may be. And on a residential unit, it would be either expansion valve, it could be a piston or capillary system. Either way, it's where that liquid turns into or boils off into a vapor. And that's the actual temperature that it's boiling off at, 41 degrees at that pressure. Now let me show you this chart because this might be a little bit easier to see. I'm using my test light here as a pointer, trying to keep my fingers out of the way. All right, I printed this off the internet. This is our... 134A and this is R1234YF, the newer refrigerant used on modern cars. This one's being phased out, but it can still show you the pressure temperature correlation here. 36, 41. 36 pounds of pressure, 41 degrees. That's for R134A. Now, these two refrigerants are very close in pressure. Let's try it here. The closest one I can get is either 35 or 37. 37, let's say, is 38 degrees saturated temperature at the evaporator. So this actually gets colder at the same pressure, which is, in my opinion, not a bad thing at all. What about other refrigerants? All right, so from one refrigerant to the next, there are different PT charts because they're, they're all different at what temperature the saturation temperature is for a given pressure. And here's another good example of how much it can change. We used R22 and residential air conditioners for many, 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 many years. Then it went through a phase out and got replaced with R410A, which is currently going through a phase out. But let me show you the difference. All right, I'm looking for, let's say 40 degrees Fahrenheit at my evaporator, that saturation temperature. All right, what kind of pressure does it take to get that? 68.6 .6 pounds of pressure would give you this temperature. 38 degrees would be 65.7, which is pretty average. Now take that same temperature in order to achieve that at the evaporator, you have to have 114 PSIG for 410A. Quite a difference. It's not double, but it's close. That is a big jump. And if you go to considering this higher pressure on the suction side, then naturally your high side, if you go into, uh, let's say, let's look at 346, you would, for 106 degrees at your condenser, saturation temperature, you'd be running close to 350 PSI, PSIG. And that's a lot of load on the compressor, so that is not a very, economical refrigerant as far as efficiency goes and I think that has a little bit to do with why they're changing to this new one other I say new one there's actually two of them that's going to be in these newer systems you got an R32 and then I think the more popular one to be used is the R454B and R54B is really just a combination of R32 and the R1234YF and that's going to be a blend, which means it's going to have to be charged with a cylinder upside down. I think why I got so mad about these gauges was you can get some cheap $40 gauges off of Amazon that look identical to this. And I paid 120 bucks for them. Boy, did they see me coming. And something else on these gauges, it did not come with this fitting here. 
this is just uh, open-ended as you see no valve cord or press or anything and according to EPA you have to have a low loss fitting this is actually a check valve so if you pull a vacuum charge whatever you got to have this on your gauges good gauges actually come with them built on the hoses herself and I'll show you that later but I've got that on here now let me show you some more gauges all right, now here's a set of gauges that I bought around 2005 if I remember correctly and uh, these are made by CPS these are much better gauges and let me see if I can show you an end I got them tire wrapped together because they're so long but there's a check valve built into these hoses right here that's your uh, vacuum hose charge hose and then you got your fittings these are strictly R134 a gauges if you'll look on this blue band right here that's your temperature and then it's got a uh, PSI is the outer ring and then you got your temperature scale that's it I don't know if you can see that but it says R134A that's all these gauges were intended for that's all they're intended for so nice gauges got chrome handles on these things been used quite a bit and another thing about gauges see these little tabs right here that's so you can pop these out and zero these in you got a little calibration screw that allows you to zero the needle in you always want to check that make sure you're getting accurate readings it looks like that could it's barely on the line close enough all right so here's my residential gauges right here these are made by yellow jacket decent gauges I've used yellow jacket for years and uh, as you can see it's got a couple of different refrigerants as far as the temperature correlation to the pressure and the one I'm interested in is for like my unit R410A that is my pressure up here and there is my temperature saturated temperature of what's going on inside the evaporator or inside the condenser high side is for a condenser low side for the evaporator now could I use these gauges for any refrigerant absolutely especially these gauges and the reason being this hose is a quarter inch hose it used to be R12 R22 and even today R410A all of them use a quarter inch fitting and they still do but automotive is different that's where you get into specialty fittings but you can buy just a fitting and put on these quarter inch ends right here and this is actually for R1234YF also have a low side that would allow me to actually tie in and read my pressures now I could not read my temperatures unless I looked at a PT chart okay you kind of getting it but it would at least prevent you from having to buy a new set of gauges every time they change refrigerants and it seems to happen quite often nowadays now with all that said it is critical that when you're done with these gauges on a certain system let's say that I just worked on my house unit and then the next day I'm gonna work on my car well when I get through that house unit I have got to evacuate those gauges make sure I get all the refrigerant out of it and also the oils are possibly different depending on what refrigerant it is so if you got oil sucked in through your high side and your gauges you want to flush that out with an AC flush as well had to get that out there because it's completely illegal to mix refrigerants that all goes back to the recovery process uh, in case you didn't know a recovery machine has to have a container for specific refrigerants like a tank for R134A a tank for 410 a, a tank for every one of them you cannot mix them together just had to get that out there and one thing just popped in my head digital gauges digital gauges if you go through the program on these dig digital gauges you can set them to all kind of different refrigerants you can use them on any of them but that applies to them too make sure you remove any refrigerant from those lines before tying into something else and any oil so on these gauges with the quarter inch fittings always make sure that this is your open end here going into the manifold like I said earlier then on the other end of the hose you're going to see a valve core depressor right there that's what actually depresses into the Schrader valve that's on these style of air conditioners 
Now, same thing earlier with the uh, R134A or the 1234YF. These have valve core depressors in them. These you screw in. After you lock them on, you screw them in. That depresses the valve core. So that's basically it. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Something I might be forgetting about. But I will say this. Uh, refrigerants, I would say 99.9% .9 of them you cannot buy unless you have a certification through the EPA. I hold an EPA 608 certification and this is a universal. If you can see right where my thumb is, that covers me from small appliances all the way up to industrial like centrifugal uh, chillers and things like that. It just says that I can buy the refrigerants and I can handle the refrigerants and I'm qualified to do all the recovery and uh, then from there it would get sent to the reclaimers. That's all this is about. Now automotive has a whole different certification. They have an EPA 609 certification and I'm waiting for SkillCat to come out. They've already got the program. They're just waiting on EPA approval. And uh, they are definitely approved through the EPA on the 608. You can actually Google that, and they're listed as one of the people that's uh, certified to give you that exam. Now, this is one I had back, you can see the date, 1995. That's the one I had to use back then to recover R134A. That's no longer valid. At some point, they changed it. And I guess it's a more elaborate exam than what it used to be. So that's coming soon for me. But so you know, anybody can walk into an AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whoever and purchase R134A up to two pounds. That's allowed. And I don't know what prevents somebody from buying two pounds at AutoZone or up to O'Reilly's, get another two pounds and so on. You know, that's, that's not a very strict rule on that. But as I mentioned, it's been going through a phase out as well. So that's basically it. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. But I just felt like I wanted to at least do a little video on this because he did ask that question. Those gauges totally confused him. And I hope I explained it. They're basically metric gauges, not really, you know, Imperial R standards, even though it does show PSI on there. That's the only thing it shows. And uh, I hope you got something from it anyway. I hope it helps. And it's a great trade if you ever want to get into refrigeration. And hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of information, kind of guide you in that, in that direction or whatever. I've been fooling around with residential, commercial air for many, many years and automotive as well. Fully retired now, so the only time I work on anything is through friends, neighbors, family, and maybe word of mouth here and there. But as I get an opportunity, I will be bringing you those videos. Matter of fact, I've got a little 2023 Kia right next door. They want me to take a look at it as early as this Saturday. So that might be my next video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm Russ Jones with Skill Savvy DIY.